morning subscribers welcome back to the channel my name is Will I'm a HGV class 1 driver um, driving a flatbed absolutely empty we got 200 bolt to do let's do this Right, so you've rejoined me um, up on the M1. Uh, we've we just stopped at 20 minute break in Leicester Forest Services. Yeah, we're about, well, we've been going three hours. There's about another two to go. Yeah, hour and 50 to go, 72 mile. Yeah, so we are just a little over halfway now. So the plan of action is run up to Buxton, Derbyshire. We're going to pick up two 20 foot uh, modulars. They're basically shipping containers that have been converted into, I don't know what these particular ones are, but they do them into office, canteen, um, toilet blocks, a whole manner of things. Basically, whatever you want it built to, they will wield it to it to your specifications. Yes, they're gonna forklift them on and then run straight back to my yard with them. As I said before, uh, it's a five hour run each way, near enough. Four hours, 46 minutes to be precise, with no traffic. Obviously you allow for a little bit. We call it five hours each way, 10 hour drive. I can't see us making it back to the yard tonight so it will be a night out um, yeah I didn't even know until literally five o'clock last night I picked up the paperwork right that's a night out um, we're meant to be doing this it's Wednesday today we're meant to be doing it Wednesday Thursday and again Friday of course if we have a night out tonight that means we're not getting back tomorrow night which means we're definitely definitely not getting back Friday night so it could be a running in on Saturday morning. It's quite a run for a day driver, don't you think? I'm not moaning. In fact, I'm totally the opposite. Absolutely loving it. The further north I travel, I've said it loads of times before, loads of videos. The further I travel, the more happy I am. And to be going up to Derbyshire, um, from Essex, remember. Um, yeah, it's great. Just get on the M1, just drive, just keep on trucking. Um, as for content, as I just said, they're going to lift, load them on with a forklift. Um, I shall ask them when I get there about recording. Either way, I think the modulars have got to be strapped on. They're definitely, uh, yeah, I'm pretty certain they've got to be strapped up and stuff. So even if I can't get footage of them being loaded, I'll get some footage of strapping it up and that sort of stuff. Uh, we'll pull out a site. If I can't record on site, we'll pull off a site. I'll have a walk around, show you what I'm carrying, what they are. They're brand spanking new buildings. That are, I believe this is the manufacturer, or the, might I think they, they even manufacture them or they are, they are the sales people. I don't know. We'll have a look when we get there. Um, but yeah. So as I say, we've now got 69 mile left. I'm going to crack on, turn the music up, enjoy the road ahead. 
I'll update you. Well, if anything else happens on a, on a journey, I'll come back to you. If not, I'll come back to you when we're about 10 minutes away. Right, so we're now about 35 miles away from the job. Um, sat nav saying about an hour from here. Um, we're on the A515. Uh, yeah, we come off M1, A50. Um, where did we run across to? Oh, I don't know. It don't matter anyway. We're on the A515, um, 50 mile an hour, single carriageway. I've never, ever, ever been on this road before in my life, so I actually don't know if it's single carriageway all the way, if it's going to become dual carriageway. Uh, yeah, we did grab a 15-minute break. Well, we was actually there about 20 minutes this morning in Leicester Forest, but of course it only counts as a 15. Um, I'm not going to make it there in one hit. I'm going to be about 10 minutes, about 10 minutes short. So we will have to stop at some point in the next three quarters of an hour for a 30 minute break. <laughs> yeah, I'm on 3.40 now, so yeah, we'd be 10 minutes, we would be 10 minutes short if we run right to the last minute, which there's just no point. <laughs> we'll get another, I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour up the road. And then we we'll stop, have the last half hour, get up there, get them on, get them strapped, get them gone. Uh, I've got no idea where I'm going to have the night out tonight, to be honest. Um, I mean, if I really wanted to, I could probably make it back to the yard. Yeah, I could. I could make it back to the yard, but I would be really pushing it on the 10 hour daily drive limit. Is it worth it? Not really. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to be parked in Toddington Services tonight. We shall see. The weather is absolutely terrible. The further north I've got, the harder the rain that comes down. It's, yeah, absolutely lashing it down at the minute. I don't know how well that front camera, the GoPro, is actually picking it up. Although you can see I've got the wipers on, almost full whack. And the key dwells. I do love runs like this where you literally just you spend your half your day just driving somewhere and then the other half of your day just driving back it's beats multi dropping that's for sure it's certainly better than being in the middle of London all day I mean if it was a sunny day had this have been yesterday and the sun was shining what a gorgeous road this would have been that walking floor in front of us is well freighted up. He was really struggling up the hill a little while ago. Um, in fact, we're coming up for another big hill in a minute. Obviously, we're running empty. Although I've only got a little 410 horsepower, it's uh, running empty. It's only a four by two. She just plows on up. Yeah. Yeah, he's struggling already. <laughs> Let me give you a push, push, mate. Yeah, uh, I sat him down at 20 mile an hour so far, and that wasn't really much of a hill. Ah, oh. see that ERF? That was a tidy looking motor. 
Oh, it gets a bit narrow here, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll look for a different route back tonight. Try and cut out this A515. Let's have a look. I'll just come straight across the yeah run straight across Derby pick up the M1 a bit further up and run down yeah that'll cut all this I've basically gone up across up again when I come back I'm just gonna go across and down we are join the M1 a bit higher up as I say, but it'll cut this. Yeah, it'll cut that bit out. I don't know. We'll have a look. We'll see how we get on. I'm actually not feeling that positive about the route in now. To be honest, I, this morning when I left the yard, I was like, yeah, that'd be lovely. The 515, that'd be dual carriageway, flat out all the way. Misjudged that little bit, didn't I? Oh well. <coughs> right, I shall carry on then. I don't suppose anything else will happen unless this route I've picked is absolutely terrible, in which case I would, if I get stuck in a little lane somewhere, I shall turn the cameras back on. Other than that, I'll get back to you in about 40 minutes for me, a couple of seconds for you. come the wrong way. Well, it's the right way. It's going to take me to where I want to get to, but... After 300 yards, go straight on A515, St. John Street, then turn left. Ah, oh, look. Road ahead closed. <laughs> Yay. I bet someone's already dropped in the comments. Will, you're an absolute idiot. What are you doing going that way? Oh, no, it's all right. It's that road to the right that's shut. We're good. We're good. We're good. Well, we're not good. New road layout for social distancing. St. John Street, then turn left. What's social distancing got to do with the road? Green man and black. Oh. It's a nice little town, isn't it? Yeah, we'll definitely cut this bit out on the way back, I think. Turn left, A515, Buxton Road. I realise there's a lot of time lapse in this video today. Um, yeah, obviously it's not the best. There's not really going to be a lot happening as such. It's just a really long drive up to here, so yeah, there's not really a lot I can I can record. Hence, plenty of time lapse and just keep coming back to you every now and again just for updates and where I am, what I'm doing. Like coming through this lovely little town now that I'm not likely to ever ever visit ever again. 
Now when I say this, I mean this with nothing but love. <laughs> it's a lovely village, it really is a gorgeous little town. Um, and if I was in a car, yeah I'd definitely drive through it. But it's not the sort of route I really wanted to come with a lorry. <laughs> It's more than doable, as you can see, there's Arctic's coming the opposite way, there's a couple of us coming through this way, but yeah, there's, I'm sure you can cut this bit out. This lorry is terrible for grip in the wet. It's just spinning up. There's no point blocking the junction. We can't go nowhere, so we might as well just stop short and anyone that wants to turn up that road can just turn then. Maybe this is the only way through. There's a lot of, an awful lot of freight coming through. Spinning up. Come on, you bag of poo. Place up there, mate. Jesus. Grip, grip, grip. Grip, you bitch. There she goes. She's got it. Plow on up. What goes up must come down. All right, three hours fifty six on the clock. Carry on then. I'll see you once I finish my break. Find out where I stopped. Right, so we just stopped for the, the 30 minute break. I was just having a right old chat with this one. <laughs> yeah, what a lovely place to stop. Oh, what a lovely break that was. Um, yeah, I was going to get a little bit more footage of well, exactly where I was parked and the lorry and stuff, but the wife rang, so of course. The wife takes priority. Road, then turn right. 
right. So we are literally just about to come off the A515. Now, if anyone watching this is Turn right. from this sort of area, Buxton, Derbyshire, what a gorgeous area and part of the country that you live. I mean, obviously, I'm used to being around London most of the time, and this is just a breath of fresh air to me. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I could definitely run around these roads all day, every day. And there's been no traffic hold-ups, there's been just, there's nothing, nothing at all. As you can see, the road ahead is just empty, there's no one about. To some of you, obviously, this is pretty normal, this is just the way of life, but as I say, when you come from London Way, or that close to the city, unbelievable, really is. I would go as far as to say this is the best trip I've had in my HGV career so far. Now, did anyone spot the height of that bridge? No. It's actually a lot higher than what it <laughs> looked. The road dips down. On approach, that looked really low then. But it's not. Harper Hill. Harper Hill Industrial Site. Really? There's an industrial estate around here? It does say we're literally a few minutes away from it. Um, yeah, a mile and a quarter. It's almost a shame for the journey to end, to be honest. I'd happily just crack on up a bit further. Oh, watch your speed, Mr. King. It is only 30 for it. Oh, traction, traction. Even other road users, you can just tell that it's just a different breed of people around here. Everyone's so friendly and flashing each other out and a lot more courteous on the road. After 300 yards, bear left, Grinlow Road, then take the third left. Nice fish and chip shop by the looks of it. What else we got here? A little pub. There left, grid low road, then take the third left. That was a quite a young female driving that tipper. 
tarmac Not lorry. Yards, turn left. Oh, look at that view. Amazing. <laughs> I'm just overwhelmed by how nice it is. HSC, Health and Safety Executive, Half the Hill. Pet Crematorium. Ah, oh. oh, sheep. All the way here I've been thinking to myself, do they not have sheep around here? It's just cows. But now all I can see is just herds and herds of sheep and no cows. Are they called herds? Do sheep go around in herds? I think they do, don't they? God, it's extremely hilly around here. What is it with the hills? Why can't they just build roads flat? Right, and the place we want is... I don't know. After 300 yards, turn right, then keep left. There's like a pond or a river or something down a Massive drop bank down here. It's all milky. Someone spilt the milk. Uh, perhaps that's where the cows used to live. XPO. I don't want XPO. Land available. Welcome to Harper Hill Industrial. The Tin Man. Obviously scrap metal. Go-kart track. My God, that scrap dude is a big old place. After 200 yards, keep left, then bear right. Ah. I did have the place on my old Google Maps. Good old Googles. What was it called? Gee. I'll go back one. In 100 yards, turn left. Ah, it looks like I just keep following the road. Take the next left. Yeah. Take the next left. Well, this is all a bit weird, isn't it? Ah, uh, we've gone wrong, we can't go over the bridge. Right, let me get back to you in a minute. I'm gonna find a different way around this estate then, I think. Unless you just turn left up the road. Yeah. That's mad. It says there, turn around at this point. I'm sorry, but there's no way an Arctic is going to do a Yui there. We want to be basically over the back there somewhere. So, how do you get there? After 300 yards, turn left. I can see the units just there. I'm sure that's the place next to us. But Christ knows how you get in. <laughs> Must go up here and turn right, I guess. Yeah, this fog. I bet that's it up there. Turn left.
I'll tell you what, I'll come back to you in a bit. Sorry about the wind noise. Yeah, so it is two cabins. Um, there's a couple of extra bits and pieces. This one's got no sides. And this one's I've just got one side. I've had to strap the bits on. As you can see, thrown some straps over. Um, there's a bit of rubber at the top just to protect the edging of the, the metal bits. They're going absolutely nowhere. And they're sitting on polystyrene, so that gives it a bit of a cushion. Yeah, that ain't sliding nowhere. They're well tight. Unfortunately, um, there was a few extra bits that goes with it, because obviously they bolt together and so all the bolts and stuff. Let me show you. Yeah, so we are carrying tape and bolts and bits. We're also carrying the two heaters in the back of the cab. Let's get these back, 194 mile back. Right. That'll make it a 400 mile day, if we actually make it back. I don't think we're gonna, to be honest. I think it's gonna be a night out. Um, I'm gonna get a few mile down the road, stop, pull over, just check them straps and the bits that I've ratcheted down, that I'm holding down just to make sure there's no movement in any of it. Uh, yeah, just to settle my own mind that they're gonna be okay for, for the whole journey back. Now obviously that one with only one side, that is gonna affect me um, with any crosswind. Um, yeah, obviously the wind's gonna try going straight through the, con the side of the container. Um, it's just gonna rock me over a little bit. Won't have the truck over unless it's really, really high winds, which we're not gonna get. That'll be fine, but yeah, we are gonna feel it, definitely. Oh dear. Right, I shall crank on down for a bit and I'll, if anything interesting happens, I'll get back to you straight away. If not, I'll see you a bit further down the road. Absolutely loving it today. Um, although I've just been informed, um, which is the main reason for turning the camera on, uh, I've just been informed the plan of action as far as the office are concerned is three of us run up here again tomorrow. The end of the road, turn right, A515, yeah. Road. They're pretty adamant that I'm making it back tonight. Not happening. Um, worry about that later. Yeah, they're adamant I'm making it back tonight. And then me, the low line CF Arctic, Hyab, that one will come up as well. And the 19 plate Hyab wagon and drag, the one that I've come out of a couple of months ago. Um, yeah, the new boy is bringing that up. I say new boy, he's been here for like a couple of months now. Oh, Martin. Really, really decent bloke. Um, yeah, really good on the high up to be fair. Yeah, definitely knows his stuff. Uh, I've taught him a couple of bits and pieces here and there. When he when he first started, his first day I went out with him just to show him what you can and can't do with the motor and the high ab. He was absolutely amazed um, what, it, what it can do, what it can lift, where it can lift it. 
Yeah, he was over the moon with it. So yeah. So the three of us, as I say, the plan. Finish that now? Yeah, so their plan of action is the three of us will run up, grab two, go back tomorrow. Um, now obviously if I do, if, that's a massive if, I made it back tonight, I'd make it back using a 10 hour drive. Goes without saying. Um, yeah, it could well be that the three of us run a night out tomorrow night. If I made it back tonight, I think, yeah, I do think three of us would be having a night out. It only takes for one little hold up, although we made it in fairly decent time coming up this morning, uh, a little over four and a half. Um, yeah, going back, you've got the bottom of the M1, which is going to be a horrible time of the night, what, well, rush hour? Will it? Yeah, it will be. It'll be rush hour on the M1. It'll be rush hour when we go on the M25. So now nah, I can't. Definitely can't see it happening. And the trouble is, once you once you go past Toddington Services, you've got nothing then until what South Mims After on the M25. Yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit. You should be able to do that journey in like half hour ish, maybe less. But now nah, about half hour, I suppose. But with the way the M25 runs, that could quite easily change to an hour, hour and a half, even two hours. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's just not worth running the risk. Um, end up running out of drive time, still on the M25. No thank you, not for me. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A515 Clifton Road. <laughs> Now on the time lapse on the way up here, I went round this roundabout about four times. I don't know if anyone spotted it. Um, yeah, the sat nav was saying, as obviously I approached from the opposite direction, uh, but from this way it was saying turn down right, basically. So as I approached, it said turn left, first junk exit. Uh, but something in my mind was telling me straight over the way I've just come from was really the way to go. So I went round the roundabout a couple of times, just basically checking on the sat nav, um, get my bearings. It worked out about, it was supposedly three minutes quicker going through there than the way I've just come back from. I don't know if I've saved anything, I don't know, maybe we'll see tomorrow. Maybe one of us will go one way, the other one will go the other, and we'll see who comes out in front at the end. Can't be a lot of difference. Although I did go through a couple of narrow streets. Whatever. <sighs> right then, I'm gonna go and enjoy the scenery once again. I don't know where I'm gonna stop for the break. Um, I did actually get a 15 minute in at that where we was loading. I pulled inside the gate. There was another lorry in there that was just finishing his break. He said he had 10 minutes left. So I thought, well, I might as well get a 15 in then then load it, strap it, whatever. Yeah, I only need half hour then on the way back, so sorted. I don't particularly like splitting brakes. I like really to have a full 45 or really 50 minutes. Um, yeah, but sometimes it, sometimes it just makes sense just to split, like today. Rather than sitting there for 10 minutes on other work, sat there 15 minutes, use an extra five, sit there for 15 minutes, get a 15 in, Stop for half hour on the way back. Happy days. Bish bash bosh. Done. Right, I'm off. See you later. Enjoy the rest of the video. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Speak to you in a bit. So we've had a major, major change of weather. Absolutely lashing it down. I was hoping to pull over and sunbathe and top up my tan and everything. Oh well. Anyway, we are, we, well, 70 mile from the yard, 71 mile, which is about hour and 40, hour and 35, something like that. 
Um, yeah, I pulled out of the services an hour ago. Lovely little break. It's been a decent run back so far. Although with this weather, I am expecting accidents. Um, yeah, and it's now half past four just coming up for us. So we are about to hit rush hour traffic. How far down are we? Yeah, we're just coming up for Toddington services in a bit. That's where the traffic's gonna start. I reckon Toddington could be slow going right round to the A10 then. So we'll just keep a close eye. Um, <coughs> on a 10 hour drive, head back to the yard, I've got about an hour to play with, uh, which sounds a lot, but those of you that know what the M25 can be like, you can lose that hour in the matter of two junctions quite easily. Uh, yeah, so, we we'll just keep a close eye, see what goes on. We could end up, I'm gonna try and head for the yard. I'm gonna head for, or plan for, going home tonight. Not have a night out, going, well, by the time I get home, it's gonna be seven, about seven after seven. At least about to watch my daughters go up to bed. Yeah, those of you that are parents, that are lorry drivers will, yeah, you'll understand. It's just a, it's the simple things in life that you actually take for granted. Um, yeah, as a lorry driver, it kind of makes you realise the things that you miss and the things that you don't necessarily appreciate when you've got. Silly things like going to, um, sorry, I was just thinking then. Um, yeah, parents' evenings, kids' school plays, um, I don't know, losing their first tooth. And I lost most of mine. <laughs> yeah, just, just the odd little bit here and there. I mean, if I can get home, I'll get home. It will be nice to see them rather than spend the night in the bed. <coughs> Good old hotel death. I've got to say, the DAF Extra Comfort mattress, absolute gorgeous night's sleep. I'd go as far as to say the most comfortable bed I've ever slept on. The 19 plate that I give up, that did have the Extra Comfort mattress and that was gorgeous. This mattress, I don't know if it's just because it's slightly older or, or what, or maybe it's not. I haven't actually checked. No, it's not very thick. It's not the Extra, fit, uh, extra Comfort. That bed is probably, it's more comfortable to sleep on the floor outside than it is to sleep in that bed. Anyway, I'm gonna stop in a minute and get some diesel, because we're down to, what we're we down to? We're down to a quarter of a tank. We'll fill it up now. Uh, that'll save us a job to, for the morning then. I'm full of AdBlue because I filled up this morning. We've only used one bar all day. So we get back two bars, so there's loads and loads and loads of that. Yeah, we fill up tonight, back to the yard, jump in the motor in the morning, walk round, quick walk round check, head back up. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to record tomorrow because it's the same journey. It's going to be exactly the same as what's happened today, apart from I'll be running in convoy. Um, I might do a live feed, which is kind of pointless telling you that because you would have seen the live feed before you've seen this video. So I might have done a live feed tomorrow that you've already seen. In which case, those of you that watched, thank you very much. Right, I shall carry on. I'll get back to you, let you know if I made it back to the yard, but I dare say I will. Um, but when we get back, we've got to unstrap and lift them off. So I'll, I'll give you a bit of footage of, of unloading, tipping. Yeah, show you what goes on. R4, do I want to go in here? Yeah. 
Right, I'll speak to you in a bit. Oh, this isn't going to plan, is it? <laughs> M25, pretty much stationary. I did expect it. I knew it was going to happen, to be honest. I'd already checked and already pre-planned for it to happen. Um, and yes, I know, the eyewear. First time I've ever been on a vlog with the glasses on. My eyes are absolutely killing me, so, yeah, time for the glasses before the migraine set in. Um, yeah, we're definitely easily going to make it. I've still got, I've got two hours of drive time left. It's an hour from here, so it gives me an hour to play with. So we'll get back, we'll get back on a, yeah, we'll get back on a 10 hour drive. All is good in the hood. We'll get back to see the little ones before they go to bed. Well, just as they're going to bed. We'll be back in the yard for about, I reckon about quarter to seven tonight. We started at seven, so I'll book off seven. Time I've done paperwork and that'll be seven o'clock. Nice 12 hour day. A Little bit of overtime money. Happy days. <sighs> right, I'll see you back at the yard. We'll get these tipped. Right, I've just finished dieseling up. We've got a full tank now. We're filled right to the brim. Uh, we are literally three or four minutes from the yard now. Um, six, seven, eight. So far, we've done eight hours, 53 minutes of driving today. I actually have no answer, no idea how we've managed to do it. Um, yeah, on paper it wasn't doable. Really wasn't doable. Uh, but we've done it, as I say. That there to my left um, is London Gateway Port, container port. Yeah, my yard's literally three or four minutes from there, just around the corner, through the residential area. And we're there. As I said before, I am gonna, I'm gonna unstrap, get these bits out of the cab. Turn that around a bit. Yeah, get these bits out of the cab, get them back on the back, undo the twist locks, jump on the big, massive beast of a forklift we got. Um, get these lifted and grounded. Sort out a bit of paperwork. Home time. Um, it's worth doing that extra little bit tonight. It means tomorrow morning I can come in, jump in the truck, you know, do my vehicle checks and that, and then just shoot, just go. Hammer down. Last thing I want to do is come in at half six in the morning and having to undo ratchet straps and lifting stuff. Yeah, so it's, it's 25 to seven now. So yeah, I did say about 22, we'll be back in the yard. Oh, I am good with times. Yeah, if I say I'm gonna be somewhere some, at some a particular time, chances are I will be there at that time or earlier when it comes to transport. When it comes to my personal life, if someone says, right, we'll meet up in, I don't know, a shopping center or wherever at 12 o'clock, you can guarantee I won't be there till one, half one. But yeah, when it comes to trucks, when it comes to work, yeah, if I say I'm gonna be there at 12, I'll be there at quarter two, 10 to. Always been the same. Now we have actually got, I don't know if I've mentioned in a vlog before, but I'll mention it again anyway. This road we've just pulled on now has got a curfew of, for HGVs, seven in the morning till seven at night. Um, now there's no road, there's no signs to tell you that. It's just part of, uh, well, when they bought this yard, they were told no trucks in or out between seven and seven, which is fair enough, it's residential. They don't. The last thing they want to hear is trailers rattling and banging and crashing down the road all hours of the night. 
yeah, I wouldn't want it, to be honest. So, yeah, we literally... We're 25 minutes later and we wouldn't have been able to come back to the yard. We have got a backup plan. We can still... We've got somewhere else we can go and store the lorries overnight, just down the road. And then we just get a taxi back to the yard so we can come out in our cars. Um, yeah, obviously for safety and security reasons. I won't say where we go and park them, but we do park them not far from the yard, so... Well, I don't mind admitting, I'm absolutely knackered after that. Um, yeah. Getting up the road, it's lovely. Probably enjoy it. I used to do it regularly. That was, you know, the long trips. It's what I'd done. I was a tramper away all week. Uh, I'm not moaning by no way. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. One of the best days of my driving career so far. By a long shot. Uh, as I said earlier the, in the vlog, that all the Derbyshire Dows and that, that's gorgeous. Never been to an area as nice as that before. Absolutely loved it. Uh, yeah, but I'm not used to doing the long distance stuff. Um, I just do it on occasions now. So, uh, yeah, when I do do it, it does take it out of me. Um, yeah, I'm ready for my bed, to be honest. Well, dinner, then bed. The main reason I've pushed on and come back tonight If circumstances were different, I definitely would have had a night out on it, 100% I would have done. Um, but I'm a family man, three little girls, gorgeous little girls indoors, um, yeah, and a gorgeous wife. Why would you want to have a night out? If you can physically get back, why have a night out? Okay, I've lost whatever the night out money is, um, you know, 25, 30, 35 quid, whatever our place pays. Um, so yeah, theoretically it's cost me 30 quid or whatever um, to go home. 30 quid to go and say, night girls, I'll see you in the morning. Worth it, 100% worth it. If it cost me 100 quid to go and see, or 1,000 quid to go and, one night just to go and say, night girls, of course I'd do it. They're your kids, aren't they? Why would you not? Right, let me go and open these gates so we can get in. I'll be back two seconds. <coughs> oh dear. Let's get right over in the corner and get these off. Bear with me a second. Just concentrate and reverse it.
six. So about nine hours, I think. Right, let's go and get these off. Buy me one. 